So when you started your last trip to India and back again, how much off-roading experience did you have before you started? <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, almost zero. Uh, likewise. I, I had bought my bike and two months before I left and I'd ridden it a total of about 100 miles. Yeah, I mean, I have been doing only road. And then I started doing in England, we have this tat, uh, the, the, not tat, these uh, green lanes. So I took it for green lanes for a while, but that was it. That, yeah. that was like, yeah, and then I modified it to do big off-road. Uh, and I was mostly on road. Yeah, and <laughs> I shipped my bike to Indonesia. And within a couple days of being in Indonesia, I decided that I was going to cross uh, the Bromo, Mount Bromo, the Sea of Sand. The volcanic crater floor. Oh. I dropped my bike about 20 times through the course of that trip. So I did get something very valuable about that, out of that, which is I'm not afraid to drop the bike. And that's probably the biggest thing is that these bikes are really robust. You can't really hurt them too much yeah. by dropping them. And if you're afraid of dropping the bike, you're never going to learn. I learned a lot by just being exposed over and over and over again. And it maybe wasn't so efficient, but it, the time in the saddle is super important for understanding the bike and the train and how it behaves. You don't have to be super skilled in order to travel off-road on the long distances and all that. You can learn a lot of that during the trip. Uh, but I think that you touched on the efficiency and I think that's why we started training as well um, because if you travel for a very long time, let's say 10 hours a day, you want to conserve as much energy as you, as you can and the correct technique and correct form will do that for you. So it's, it's exhausting on its own and you don't want to just make your life worse by just doing it wrong way. So I think that that's for us a great benefit of training. Yep, and spending less time picking it up or for me usually waiting for a local to come help me pick it up because it's still really hard to pick up. Another point um, why we train is that because we most of the time travel alone, um, it's safety feature in good confidence off-road uh, because you don't want to get stuck somewhere really, really gnarly. Um, that's the that's that's worst thing that can happen. And a good training uh, will give you that confidence and will give you that skill to cover the terrain which we kind of travel in, in a safer manner. And that is really important. Yeah, and in terms of the confidence on the train, is there some stuff that maybe I would have thought was too hard, which I later discovered was too easy, but the counter to that is a lot of people will get themselves in over their head because they don't necessarily recognize mm. in advance what's going to be difficult. I have mentioned the terrain we do, so um, it probably... It's good to mention what we do. What, what, what did you encounter on your trip? What, so I was training for. Spent a lot of time on road, but a lot of it is very bad roads. You get a lot of potholes. You might oh. have a mud, flooded roads. You might have a landslide that you have to navigate through or around. That happens a lot in Nepal. Yeah, monsoon in Nepal is terrible. Yep. Um, a lot of campsites that I had to get to that was maybe at the end of a very rough road. So I had uh, a little bit more off-road when I was going back from India, um, but that's because I chose to do more off-road. I was picking up roads on a satellite which were not even like, you know, on the map. And if you start doing that, then you will get some rougher stuff. But yeah, I'm on 80% I'm on, on the road as well, yeah. you know. And even those roads you're looking at on the satellite, they are roads. roads. They you are know, still they roads, are yeah. ro roads that the locals are bringing their cars on, they're bringing their scooters on. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, the single track is only for the campsites. Or if we now are actually trying to combine all what we learned and we want to challenge, you take the luggage off and you do go for a single track or a dry riverbed or something like that. But on a trip, no, because you might see a trail over there, but you don't know whether it peters out. And then you have to start thinking, will I be even be able to turn myself around at the end of this? And usually I would go, ah, no, it's not really worth it. I'll move on. 
yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, an idiot in this and I'll probably plow through at some point, but a lot of times there are better alternatives to do that kind of thing, you know. So that would be terrain, the river crossings we have, I mean, my deepest river crossing was around here, believe it or not, and that was in, in uh, Bartang Valley. And I think that with rivers, it's rivers are seasonal and in, in high altitude rivers are also glacial. So there's usually better time to cross them than like when they are in the biggest power really. Yeah, and since these are roads that locals use, they're not going to be able to take their lotta through waist deep water. Yeah. So usually you'll get stuff that's low and even then, I didn't do my first river crossing until Nepal, which was six months into my trip. Oh yeah. No, there's, there's definitely something to be said that, you know, if you see all the advertising, how you cross the rivers and YouTube and all that and, and flying off the dunes. That's not, that's really not what it's about no. with Overland. No, not really. So we talked a lot about why we train, but what is it that we've actually been doing up to this point? We have been doing a lot of balance and low speed and that kind of translates into doing figure of eights. I cannot see anymore. I cannot do figure of eights anymore. I dream figure of eights. Yes, yeah, so it's a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of figure of eights, which is about drilling in the proper technique for turning. A lot of balance drills on it's, and off the bike. So that was the balance, the figure of eights, the low speed, um, really, really core skills. Um, we then uh, moved up to climbs and descents, which you love. I love climbs. <laughs> I hate descents, which means I have to do more of it, unfortunately. Yeah, because um, I mean, that's my opinion, but I think that actually descents and braking are probably the most important skills um, you can have because going fast is quite easy. But slowing down and in a, going slow and controlled downhill or even in the terrain, I think that's where it starts to matter and that's where the balance and everything and throttle comes yeah. together. So um, hills and um, downhills. Um, here we scaled it to a kind of cornering, didn't we? Yeah. So a little bit faster in the corners on a dirt. Um, sitting position and standing position, uh, that's always kind of good. No wheel spins, that's uh, for the advertising industry. Then we tried to jump the log. Well, you tried to jump the log. I tried to jump the log. He, he's obsessed with the log. I'm obsessed with the log. I stole the log in a camping site and brought it uh, to our little playground. Uh, but there is a use case for actually being able to overcome the vertical obstacles. And I think that's where it comes uh, to, um, to use, really. And that's it. That's all what we trained, right? Sand riding in yeah, the desert. Yeah, and we did a lot of sand. But we cannot, you know, we can maybe, if, if, if the lockdown ends, we can go to the desert. So that's what we will cover, really. And uh, we don't have a list of episodes. No. Nope. Um, it's going to be up to you in the comments and all that to kind of give us a feedback and maybe tips what you want to hear and see. Um, and we will take it from there. So... Yeah, see you. Uh, we'll probably do training on the balance and some exercises to to at home to some muscly thingies. Um, so yeah, see you next time. <laughs>